Okay, we're live. Okay, so welcome to the Hucolo webinar. It's Saturday, the 17th of January, 2015. Welcome, everybody. We are today talking about Atlantis and Lemuria. We have a specialized subject for what we're talking about, and we will be discussing and taking questions about the subject. Jim may be channeling someone from Atlantis and Lemuria. We yet to find out. It's all going to be a nice little surprise. So we've had lots of questions. We've also done a pre-webinar as well on this to get us ready and get the questions in place. Um, but we will be involving uh, questions um, from the room and from outside. So first of all, we're going to see who comes through, and then we're going to take it from there and just um, see how it flows. But um, enjoy yourself and have fun. I'll hand it over to Sabrina. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, to our show on Atlantis and Lemuria. Um, I just would like to remind everybody that we won't be doing any personal questions today. It's all on the subject at hand, if you please. So with that, I leave it with Jim. And let's have Jim focus and see what happens. And welcome everyone sitting there with Jim. <laughs> yes, good morning, everybody. I have with me uh, Francine over here, Sandy here, and Will here. Hi, this is Will's first time. <laughs> and uh, he was at my very first public channeling. Um, and that was a while ago, wasn't it? Uh, a little over a year, about a year and a half ago. So, uh, but he's with us today, so that's really cool. I'd like to start off with a little bit of a blessing and a thank you for everyone that helps out here and all the love that is shared. We just ask, I, I have a prayer for you, you and Colony today because I know that it's not always easy as a community to be on the same page. And I just want to send out love, goodness and understanding, wisdom to understand that we're just here to help each other we're here to give information that may not come out otherwise. We're here to uh, share the wisdom of the universe, the love of the universe, and become a community with the universe. So uh, many times people are looking for a particular thing from human colony. They want to go to outer space. They want to be healed. They want to find the answers to their personal problems, find a job all these different things but you know what that matters very much to each individual but in the big picture what matters is that we follow the truth the love the understanding we follow what we know in our heart to be right you know what I mean it's not that we're here to get things from the aliens we're not here to uh, take everything that we can get. We're here to share the understanding that we are a community, that we have love for one another, that we are part of the universe, that we can be more than what we are. And they are helping us with that. They are helping us with our fourth dimensional energy that's been ignited within the past couple years, helping us to grow and to learn who we really are and who we are in this setting, which is our world, our third dimensional setting, and who we are within the galaxy, who we are within God's perception. So with that, I will, I will uh, ask someone to come in <coughs> and say, uh, uh, but I just wanted to say thank you to everybody and remember the unconditional love that we share with one another will not go unnoticed. God notices that unconditional love that we share with one another. That is the biggest thing that he notices. He doesn't notice all your faults. He doesn't notice all your sickness. You have your own contracts with whatever, with yourself and with your spirit but he notices how much love you can give and how much love is around you. Does that make sense? That is what you're going to be judged on. You're going to be judged on your love. 
not all these little trivial things that you've done. Now, if you murdered somebody, that's not very loving, is it? That will be a judgment. But it will be judged on how much love is here. And when you start killing people, there's not much there because you don't have respect for yourself. So, so you see, it all comes from the standpoint of love. Everything that you will be judged on will be from a love standpoint. So I just wanted to say that to you. Because the more you love, the more you give, and the more you share, that's what you'll be judged on. That's what you'll be judged on. All right, I'm going to bring someone in and see if we can answer some of these questions. I don't even know what all your questions are, but I know that um, I know they should be interesting. <laughs> all right, uh, hold on, and I'll see you later. Ah. <sighs> ah. Welcome. Welcome. How are you today? Welcome. Ah, thank you. I feel welcome here. I feel much goodness. Yes. Brilliant. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? I'm Mikalak. And I have come to help you with your Atlantean and Lemurian questions, be that as it may. Make a leg. Hello and welcome. It's been a long time. Yes. Oh, you know me. <laughs> Hello, Kim. How are you? I'm all the better for seeing you. This is wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you are so welcome. So, um, are you from Atlantis or Lemuria? Let's I was there first. one time, yes. So okay. I have some overview of it, yes. Okay, so we would like to get um, an overview of the culture, of what it was like um, living yeah. there. And uh, we would also maybe perhaps start with um, where exactly was Atlantis and Lemuria? Ah, there's a very good question. Everybody has it all messed up. Um, they think, oh, out in the Atlantic Ocean, out in front there. No, it wasn't there. There is no chance that it could have been there. Um, the place where it really was is in the Mediterranean Ocean. It was a smaller place. It's where, where Crete is. Do you know where Crete is? Um, yes. The, the Minoan civilization was the leftover population from Atlantis. So if you can understand, uh, let me tell you what it was like in its fullest. Because I was there pretty much in the middle. Pretty much in the middle. It was a, a circular, in uh, concentric circles within one another. That's how they built the city, uh, the, the great city of Atlantis. The continent was Atlantis, of course, but it really wasn't a continent. It was more like an island. And so it was the island of Atlantis because there was no way that a continent, it was as big as a continent. But... I see that you call it the continent of Atlantis. Now, part of it is underwater, yes, now. But back then, 
Yes, the city was built in concentric circles around a, a mountain that they built. We called it a mountain, but it wasn't really a mountain. It was more of a mound of uh, dirt that that we made over this over the years. Actually, it started off as a sacrifice area where people would give their uh, vegetables or it wasn't live animals or anything, but they would give vegetables and products to the gods. And it started and it just built up and it it rotted and it smelled very bad. So they throw dirt on it. So they would throw the dirt on the rotted vegetables. And after a while, it started to build up, of course. But they decided they wanted to make this an area, uh, a special area. So they actually just were given the, the go-ahead to make a huge mound in the middle where they built what people call a temple. It was a temple of sorts, but it was more of an a place to go to give your respect to those founders of the city. They they did not I mean they worshipped God as God, but these were the founders of the continent of Atlantis that had their it was a large uh, pyramid in the middle of of this temple, if you would want to call it that, or building, museum, whatever. But it it had the faces of the four founders. Now, you are told that the founder was Poseidon and his ten sons, the five sets of trip, uh, uh, twins. Well, uh, that's not quite true either. It was Poseidon in the sense that he was a water person, a man from the water. And they he eventually took on the name of Poseidon in the sense that no he wasn't a Greek god the Greek god Poseidon was someone else but he did take on the name of Poseidon within the, within the community so that they could under they could give him a a name of authority and he was a man from the ocean he was a man from ships so his face was on one side, and there was three other faces that they would come and they would just thank them for the work that they had done to achieve this great city, the, the concentric circles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and the life there started off in the middle where I was was a very spiritual life, but it was starting to be corrupt in some places. It started off as a purely spiritual and wonderful place to be. But as time grew on, some of the most powerful people started to become a little corrupt. However, let me, I, I get ahead of myself. You want to know who started the city. It, it was man, but it was also not man. It was part alien as well. The Yu Yil, a fraction, a faction, or whatever you want to call it, a, a small section of the Yu Yil community was also there and helped it to grow in spirit. And it's what gave it the technological uh, adjustment after the first hundred years. It gave it light, it gave it technology, it gave it uh, something different than what the world has seen. But you see, it was all within these concentric circles. And so the outside community of natives was actually not part of that. The natives on the, the island of Crete, where this area, there was an area, it, it, it's still partially there, if you want to know. It's just buried because, let me tell you what happened. But I, I, once again, I get ahead of myself. So um, let me go back first and tell you that they saw the greatness of the city, and they are the ones that put godlike qualities on it, the people, the natives that were around the city. So because these were the city was not from the natives. It was not built from the natives. It was built from a humans that started a great society there, but then the Yugil was also there toward the very beginning. So 
it was a it was a a uh, community of both alien and human people, and also mermaids were very prevalent back then, and so they were part of the community as well because they helped guide the ships to the the city when because they they had a great trade route and they were in a perfect place for trade. They were in the middle of the Mediterranean Ocean, and so they could go in any direction and trade with the people there, and. It was a one, they became very powerful and very, very rich. And the time frame of this is different when, than what your people say it is also. The time frame is not 9,000 years ago. Not, no, it wasn't that far ago, away. It was more like 6,000. So um, that was the other thing that I wanted to make very clear to you that it, it, it if you went back 9,000 years from now, they would not have existed. But if you went back 6,000 years from now, they would have existed. So it was about 6,000 years ago. So the time frames are all messed up. The, uh, the location is not right. But um, s some have gleaned, some explorers have gleaned that uh, that is where... Uh, Atlantis was in the Crete area. It is the most likely spot, many of them said. And they were correct because of the many different things that they have found and the many different um, proofs and existence. They did find a circular city over around Spain somewhere, but it was a different city. It was, it started with a T, Terra. Terapasis or something like that. I'm not sure what it was called then. Uh, but um, it, they did find that city, but it could not have possibly been Atlantis for so many reasons. But, um, yes, the life there was very good, very prosperous, much trade. In fact, the trade from the very early ships that were there and founded the city with the Yigil within that first hundred year, years. Actually, the Yigil helped make it even better than it was. But um, the, the trading began immediately because they had lots of fruits and vegetables and different things, and they had to ex be expedient to trade those kind of things because, of course, they will get, they will get bad really fast. And, but they took them to very close ports. There are several islands in the Mediterranean Ocean, in the Greek islands there, um, that they would trade with. So they, they, they could get there within a day or two by ship or less. So they, could, they started good trade immediately, and then it expanded, of course. So, and they had some animals there that were interesting at that time, and they could trade those animals as well. And, and so it became a very quick trade market for them because they had a central location. They had um, good ships because they had a good sailor, a good captain that was the beginning, that was there at the beginning, and he knew how to invest his ships into a way that they could find places to trade. So there is how it started. That's how the wealth started. But with the Yuyil, they brought wealth with them as well. They brought the technology. They brought, they did not trade technology, by the way, they, but they did bring technology, and they did bring the understanding of the future with them, but they did not use it to its fullest extent because they did not want people to be, uh, to look at them as gods because if they would have used their technology the way that they could have, they would have been seen as even more godlike than they were. But they, they played that down, which was a wonderful thing for them because they were very spiritual, and they did a very wonderful thing by not doing that. They did not make themselves into gods. So, but, uh, yes, it was a very rich culture at that time. Everyone was seen as an equal. Of course, there was leaders and politicians, and those around that would take a, a higher position, as you will, However, they were not the kind of high positions that would look down at people. Looking down at people, it did not happen. They, 
they mingled in the shops and in the areas just like everyone else. And this is what made Atlanta so great, is that eventually when they did open up to other people coming in, that it was a very um, hospitable and humane place. There was very little crime. With that being said, I think I should be quiet and let you ask some questions. So you did not see the you yell as God. So who did you who did you worship? We worship the one God, of course. Okay. He had his own he had his place in our society as the one God. We did not have lots of temples and things for him because he was everywhere in our, our in our opinion. He was there with us, and we could we knew him because of all the peace and tranquility that we were experiencing, and we thanked him daily for that. And we had small temples in each of our homes for him. We do not need a large temple in the middle of town because we had one in our home, and which we would go to daily. <laughs> And you had the awareness that um, the Uyels were not from here, or they just passed themselves. Oh yes, here? well, they looked slightly different, of course. They, they, and even back, and back then they looked even different than they do now. But, but they did look human enough to be acceptable, and they were friendly. And when they did appear, we thought that they were part of the native society. That's originally what was was thought is just the natives looked a little odd but the thing is that we learned that they that their technology and their ships and things of that nature but before they showed us all that they showed us themselves and who they were and how they what they were going to do they told us ahead of time of course they told them I was in the middle there but they they told the people at the beginning we are not from here we'll be honest with you we are not from here. We have things you don't have. And don't be afraid, but we're going to bring them to you. And it worked out very well. Now, what about in terms of the monetary system? It was, uh, the monetary system was different. Uh, they did trade different things. It was more of a trade system, actually. Um, it, they didn't use money, per se. But they used silks and different things from the Orient eventually to trade for different things and fruits and vegetables and whatever you had that you could share within the concentric circles. Of course, there was a trading, uh, there was um, uh, agriculture and things of that nature. So and somewhat for me, it was a, a gigantic city. I mean, really quite huge. It was. It took a good portion of the island, but um, and I'll tell you what happened to that in a little bit. But yes, it was more of a trading system, and if you could did not have anything to trade right then, then you would do some work for them or whatever. Um. So, um, in terms of your technology, um with crystals. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, crystals? Well, it's not my technology. I'm not a Yil. I was actually a human spirit. But um, the, the crystals back then were not as powerful as the ones that the, one, the Egyptians had a couple of centuries later. But they were they were used daily in communication and for drawing power and energy, starting fire, things of that nature. Yes, they were used quite extensively by the Yu Yil, and they taught uh, humans how to use them and how to draw power from them in different ways, yes. Also, to use them as healing instruments. You see, crystals can be intentioned, and the ones that they had were... <coughs> Uh, a little different. They didn't come from Earth. They they were technologically advanced. They were ad things were added to the crystals so that they could actually do healing. They could actually uh, 
the crystal itself can do healing, but this uh, enhanced it and made it greater. And also with light, it could bring energy and light and things of that nature. So I can't even tell you how it worked because I didn't know. I was not a technology kind of person, but I could tell you that they used them for many different things because intent they used it on intention basis. However, that that particular kind of crystal is still on Earth somewhere. There are some of them somewhere. I know they have to be because when the when the uh, Atlantis was destroyed, there had to be some that's still there. Yes. So, and what did those crystals look like? They were usually uh, a buffed circular. They were circular. And uh, there are some in different shapes. They did, but they were actually made into different shapes for certain different things. Color? <coughs> Mostly clear, but there was red and green and yellow. And um, mostly clear, yes. And... Uh, mostly with uh, some kind of technology added to it for different purposes. The different colors were for different things. So I do not even remember what they, the colors were for. But I do remember, because I was not privy to using one all the time, I saw them being used by the Yil. They obviously were not to be used by humans because... They uh, they would hurt them because they didn't wouldn't know how to use them, and they actually were used somehow with uh, intention and brave waves frequencies. Now that I understand that, but um, they were not in, in human possession, except for maybe if one was given to a human, they were told not to touch it. It could be sh dis displayed in their home or something as a gift. But they, I, they were, that was very rare. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Lemuria, if you have any information on them? Lemuria. Now, according to your present-day <coughs> scientists, archaeologists, whoever you want to talk to, it never existed. However, that is wrong. It did exist. It, and they say it existed in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. However, that's not quite right. It was, it was a break-off from the Atlantean culture toward the end. So it's not quite as old. But it was very spiritual. And it was more in the Pacific Ocean than it was. It was really not in the Indian Ocean at all. It was in the Pacific, South Pacific Ocean. And it was several hundred miles from where they would even think of looking. So, um, yes, they did not get that right at all. And they stopped looking and said, it doesn't exist, never did, blah, blah, blah. Wrong. It did. So the Lemurians did break off at the end there from the Atlanteans because they had become a little too corrupt, a little too materialistic. Whereas the Lemurians left because they did not like the, the materialistic attitude of the city. They did not like that there was becoming more of a class distinction. They did not like that the spirituality was becoming less honored and less important. <coughs> so they decided, a, a group of them decided to move out. And they were given permission because Atlantis was not the kind of place that would say no, you can't go, but they were allowed to go, and so they moved out because they wanted a more pure spiritual experience, a more pure uh, earthly third dimension grounding experience because that is the kind of people that they were, and it was none of the Yuya left. It was all humans that started Lemuria. That was another thing. Some people have suggested that it was not all humans that started Lemuria, but it was. And Lemuria was a much simpler place and did not have the technology that Atlantis had, but it was a wonderful and spiritual. And the thing about Lemuria that was very interesting is 
miracles would happen there. Because of their great love and spirituality, they would be saved from many harsh things, and they were saved from many, um, many tribes that would try to wipe them out and things of that nature. Because, of, of course, by the time that they were down there, there were ship, there was more ships in the water, and they were coming to the islands, and they had found this island that was perfect for them, and it it was a wonderful wonderful place for. I I I don't think it lasted more than three or four hundred years. <clears throat> what else would you like to know? Okay, I now go on and on and on, but I know you have questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I will now let others ask questions. Who's first? Uh, uh, I Go ahead, uh, Gabriel. I'm wondering about the Yael. As Bashar speaks about the Yael equation from uh, the hybrid program. Here and how can them they be? Gabriel, my dear friend, time? you are cutting in and out, cutting in and out, and I could not hear the question. Uh, I'm wondering about Bashar speaks about the Yaelis equation of uh, hybrid children program. I wonder how the Yael can be at that time. You're wondering how the Yael could be here at that time? Yes. In what way are you wondering? Because Bashar speaks about the, hy the creation of the hybrid children program. Yes. Well, yes. Hybrids, you mean there is hybrid Yu Yu, yes. <laughs> These were Yu Yu before the hybridization program. He is speaking of the program. There was a Yu Yu species before then. Oh. I understand. Thank you he so just much. does not speak of it that way, no. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Um, I, he keeps cutting in and out. Yes, I um, I suppose, so how How was there, um, I'll, I'll ask the question, the obvious yes, question. Yes, go ahead. How was, how was there a species before that, being that the yells came about from the hybridization of humans and... Well, the Yu Yil before hybridization were still called Yu Yil in some in some cultures. So it even before the hybridization they were called Yu Yil, but after it they were called Yu Yil as also. But it's from a different it's from a different um, stance or viewpoint. Do you understand? <laughs> I call them Yu Yil because that is where they are. That is their origin. To me, I have to use it in my terms, in my the way that I understood it. So that is how I understood it. Okay. Is it all linear? Is it is this all linear in the fashion of time? It is. Well, your version of linear time is quite interesting. But yes, there is a linear capacity to it. But there is also an abstract capacity to it. So um, that would take me a while to explain. But <clears throat> understand that on Earth they did live on a linear scale, so to speak. But they do not speak of time in Atlantis or Lemuria. They speak of the different uh, parts of the sky, the different planets and the suns, the, the seasons, the plants and the animals, how they act. You understand what I'm saying, correct? Yeah. It was more, not about time, but about what was at, at the now. Because we realize that everything is now, so yeah, we have yeah. we have that awareness. Um, yes, but we were we were just 
trying to establish that if you were talking about the UELs in the same way that we think of them. I see. Um, no, not probably. The you these were um, the before hybrid, yes. But they were still UEL, basically. When you it's just that they were became a hybrid species, that's all. But there were some before the hybridization that were of a you have to understand what was the UEL before they were the UEL? They were still UEL, but now they're UEL plus. Um, but that is what they were to us. And did you were you aware that everything is here and now? So were you aware? Are you aware of us? Was I aware back then of you or now? I'm aware now of you, but I was not aware of you back then. I was in my human state. I was in my now. I was in my uh, one of my many lives. That is all. It is not that complicated, really. Yeah. So it's not like uh, they would be aware of. Could could they be aware of other lifetimes before or after? The Yil were, but we. We were not much interested in that because we didn't see any meaning to it. Um, they could really not, you have to understand, at that point in time, we really didn't care about past lives or future. We just cared about making our lives happy. A lot like many of people today. <laughs> but the Yuyil were more advanced, of course, but they would not put that in our face or try to teach us about that if we did not want to learn want to learn that so they had their own ways but they were always so generous and giving to us in their love and understanding and if they could give us anything to help us they would do that many times they would heal us and that would be a great gift how did you interact with each other and what was your communication? Was it verbal or was it telepathic? No, they were verbal with us. Um, our telepathic abilities were not very good at that time. So they would speak to us, but they did interact just like anyone else, even though they were of a higher nature. And some of the humans were also put in a higher plane. But they would mingle with us in the marketplaces and trading areas just like anyone else and would actually trade things of theirs for things of ours that that we would like or use as pieces of art or whatever sometimes it was a very fun time oh, it was many thousands of years ago of course but they made it tolerable they made it actually they actually raised the standard of living for us without us even knowing it I'm sure do you understand that they could probably they probably did I don't know what the rest of the world was doing at that time but I know that we were comfortable Weren't there any Palladians uh, back then? Or? Yes, there were Palladians, but we didn't know about them. Actually, they visited once, not when I was alive on Atlantis, but they did visit Atlantis once, So, what, and they stayed there for quite a while, but not during my time. Are you familiar with Cryon? Yes. Okay, because he speaks of, like, Lemuria being started by the Pleiadians first, before Atlantis. I don't know if that's... Actually, that is not true, because, uh, well, the Pleiadians did come to Lemuria, but it was not started by Lemuria. Mm -hmm. I mean, started by the Pleiadians. They were there because it was such a peaceful society they visited, but it was an actual break-off from the Atlantean culture and the Pleiadians were there but not at the, not at the very very beginning but I can see where he could make a mistake there because 
they did influence that culture a great deal. No, huh? Hi. Yes. Hello? Hello there. Hi. I, mean, I know who you are first. I didn't catch your name. That's all right. It doesn't no matter. Problem. It doesn't matter. No problem. Actually, what I want to I have several questions. The first one, who are the people that descended from Atlantis now? Descended from Atlantis now? Yeah. They oh, existed. they descended. I, the, yeah. the Minoans. Minoans? Where do they locate? They are on Crete. They are on the yeah. island of Crete. They Minnesota. were... Like, one, one moment. They were the civilization that were left over from the Atlanteans. Very yeah. uh, an artistic culture, and, and therefore, it and that actual species disappeared as well. That that race of people disappeared as well. So there is actually no one directly from Atlantis on Earth now. Okay. But there, I mean, there is. There are a few survivors here and there, but not a whole culture. All right. So Atlantis was in the Mediterranean Sea at the beginning. Yes. Okay. Will it rise? We heard about Atlantis rising. Is it coming back? I didn't hear that. Will Atlantis rise? Is it coming back? I do not think so, but I am not aware of that. We heard but Atlantis. I know that people are saying that it will rise back up again. Perhaps they're thinking of a culture similar to Atlantis that will rise up, which is the truth. There will be cultures similar to Atlantis that will rise up in your time. Maybe that, it's uh, Lumeria then. But it will then. not be actually the same Atlantis. But it okay. will be is it, is, the same Is it Atlantis. Lumeria then? Because I heard Lumeria is is actually part of uh, Hawaii, Hawaii right now. And they say that those, the sunken part of Hawaii will rise back again. Is it true? I do not believe that that is true because Lumeria is much more south. South, not in the Hawaiian area, okay? Because yes. I heard that from from Kryan himself. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Of course, Hawaii is the heart of the Earth, and there are many many things about Lemuria that are unknown because mm -hmm. you would have to be there. But as far as I knew, what I knew when I was alive and thought of, I never really looked back on Lemuria after I went into the Oversoul because I was from Atlantis and but I do know a little bit about it what I have heard and what people have said but you say now that Cryon says that it is in Hawaii yeah right no that is interesting because I thought it was several hundred miles more south Cryon, oh. Cryon mentions that um, what's what we can make up of um, Mu or Lemuria is the peak of Hawaii so as the the changes come, uh, came to, let's say, change Lemuria, and they were slowly sinking and sinking and going water. People oh, I see. Climbed towards saying. what was the peak, what we would call Hawaii now. And I see. That was the last of the um, what was left of Lemuria. Oh uh, well, that is true. Lemuria was did sink from a a great uh, geological seismic thing and some people did escape so they could have gone to Hawaii that is very possible I did not go that far into the into their history but mm -hmm. uh, yes that's very possible then okay is there a con connection between uh, uh, Lumeria and Atlantis because the people oh, yes. are people saying there is what is it the, the, the Lumerians were a, a group that left Atlantis and started their own civilization. That's what I'm telling you. They started their own little social group, if you will, their own island, their own continent. They call it the continent of Lemuria also. But it is not a continent. It's just an island. But, yes, it was wiped out in a great uh, geological uproar. And, yes, probably some of them did escape and went to Hawaii. That would not surprise me at all, because it is only a few hundred or three, four or five hundred miles away. So that is very possible. Okay. The 
the last question before I go. Uh, there's two, at our DNA, there's two areas in our globe that has mentioned, uh, named after Atlantis. One is in Dubai and the other one is in the Bahamas. Would you think it was it a good idea to name it Atlantis after Atlantis has sunk? It's, uh, it depends on who you are. Some might take offense to it, but I do not. I think it is a compliment for them to uh -huh. remember us. Okay, good. For who we were, yeah. for the great society that we were, and for the contributions to the earth that we gave at that time. They may not have continued forward a great deal after the moment Minoans had left the earth, then it. Uh, I think that still the thoughts of Atlantis continue. The spirit of Atlantis moves forward. So I am not, I am very happy to say that I was part of it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it. No problem. So were there a war between Lemuria and Atlantis? No, there, not that I know of. Okay. Could there be a, a third civilization that we haven't named correctly, perhaps, and that was in the Atlantic Ocean? Well, if the Lemurians are now in Hawaii, that would be the remnants of Atlantis. Because they broke off from Atlantis, they went to Lemuria. I did not know that they... I knew that there was a great uh, geological problem there and they were most of the planet was uh, most of the planet the island was destroyed but and I knew that there was some that is escaped but I did not know that they went to Hawaii now Hawaii may have some Lemurians there which are are actually Atlanteans from the beginning but also Atlantis was wiped out by a great uh, volcano Santorini exploded. Do you know what what island that is? Yeah. In Greece, yes. It was the greatest, one of the greatest volcanic eruptions ever. And it did wipe out most of the Atlantean culture. The Minoans were what was left over from that. Many of the natives of Crete were also wiped out. And the city was totally destroyed. So... So was uh, that, was that what... Uh destroyed uh, Atlantis in the end? Or? Yes. The, the eruption of Santorini, yes. And there was no premonitions, being so spiritual and everything. There Correct. No warning or foretelling. The thing is about that time is that it was a very calm culture in the sense that, uh, yes, the you had some things that they could probably use to to tell that, but it, it it was not detected for some reason. Uh, earthly third dimension grounding experience because that I cannot hear you. Um. Okay, we have two more questions from people in the audience. Um. One is, what about Man Mount Shasta? Um, what about it? Because There's we heard that they, it, that was part of, or something to do with the Lemurians. I'm not quite sure where the connection is. The Lemurians in Mount Shasta. Now, I am not sure about that. I, I have no information about that. I know that Mount, there is a civilization under Mount Shasta. I know that there's still some a civilization there. Where their origins are from, I am not sure. But yes, they are a very spiritual group. And I'm sure that uh, after a great geological uh, event, people are scattered. And I am sure that there are Lemurian, Lemurians went different places. So, but as far as I, I cannot report all the places where because I do not know. Okay, and another question was, were the Lyrans, uh, did, were they there? Did, did the Lyrans were not there. The Lyrans were actually in what you call Florida. Fl what now is known as Florida is the first place that the Lyrans were. 
vote. And was that on the the same uh, same period of time that you were around? Um, was that before similar. It was it was maybe before my time. They were there before me. Yes, before I lived there, a couple hundred years. So was there a? Do you know if there was a community built around the Lyrans at that time, or? Lyrans were responsible for what is called the Fountain of Youth. And uh, people had found, uh, people had rumors and legends about a fountain of youth down there. That was because the Lemurians were interacted with the culture there and the people seemed to grow younger. And so they, they started a legend, rumor, whatever it was about fountain of youth. So, but they were, yes, they did have a community there for a while because they wanted to learn about Earth. They did want to establish a place there that they could uh, go back and forth and understand what was going on with the planet. They did have some other places around the planet, but the first place was in Florida. It was a, a very uh, strategic spot for them because it, a lot of great weather fronts and things would start in that area in the Pacific. Uh, or, or yes, the Atlantic or whatever ocean it was, but um, and also it was in a great Gulf. It was sort of protected. It was also connected to a great continent, and it was very close to another continent. And so they they thought that was a good spot to to um, to start. But they did have several other places that they did go to. <clears throat> Okay, um, another thing that we have heard is that um, your technology, what you use, uh, will eventually be found. They will have to find some of it, yes. And I will tell you why. Because when uh, Atlantis was destroyed, it was there was crystals there, there was technology there, there was you yell there. The, these things will have to be found eventually, but they do, they're they not looking in the right places. However, that was a long time ago, and it's very varied. Okay. Kim? We can't hear you. You're muted. Oh. Go ahead. Are you going to go? Ah, sorry, technical difficulties. Ah, <laughs> Hello. No problem. And then the woman has a question. Go ahead. Yes, I would just like to ask about the birthing pods in Lemuria. Um, I have some memory of having to leave them in a hurry. Um, I remember them as dome kind of buildings, um, and in within them the children grew. That was the Canadian um, portion, yes. Okay, thank you. Ultimately, what did happen to the pods and the children within? I have no recall. The, they did. When they were also destroyed when the when that area was destroyed. They will have technology there to find as well. But once again, it's very buried, and they actually have found some technology in in that area. Uh, and therefore, this, your 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 scientists disclaim that the Moria ever existed, and this is to stop all the lookings for it, because they did find some Pleiadian technology there. <clears throat> mm, There's okay, other reasons you. why they don't want them looking for it as well, and that is because. They are studying it. They are studying all the different things of Lemuria, and having have, telling the world that they they didn't exist is a good way to to uh, make people not believe. However, there are other things too. There were gr there's groups around the Earth that are very into Lemurian occult. 
they did have a very great the people of the Muria were very spiritual and had great power over the entities of the earth the great the materials of the earth and so they call that a cult but it was actually uh, telekinesis at a point so I could go on and on Mm, thank you very much. Thank you. You are welcome. Your question. Yes, you spoke of uh, the founding of Atlantis earlier, and you mentioned one of the founders. Yes. Who are the other three? The other three founders, if I can remember, they were Arcus, Tendius, and more. And where were they from? And they were from, well, one of them was a Yu-Gi-Oh. Arcus was a Yu-Gi-Oh. So, so he is on, on the pyramid. And Moore and the other are both, were both humans. And both actually from the sea, from other places, coming to Atlantis. But Arcus was one of the main founders as well. Thank you. So male dominated. But yet their females were held in high esteem and equals. They were not unequal. And if there was a female that was of high intelligence and of leadership ability, they were put to use in that ability. But the founders just happened to be male. Because males are the ones that usually traveled by ship. It was not seen as, as a good place to birth children. And that is why they were not on the ship as much. Birthing children on a ship can cause problems for the child as well. Are the Liberians interacting with the Argathians at this time? Argathians. Let me re I do not know. This was a quick question what? from a guest. Um, what? It was a question from a guest watching him. Maybe I did not pronounce the name right. Is it Argathian? Anyone? Is anyone aware, <laughs> aware of Argathian? Yeah, yeah. Argathians are below the earth. Okay, I understand. No, I, as far as I know, but, but you see, um, my, my, I am limited to the middle of the, the Atlantean history and all the things that I've learned after. So my, I am not um, the bearer of every bit of information. So the Agathians may be in touch with the Lemurians at this time, but I am not aware of it. I am not. I have. I do not have every bit of information, but I do have enough to be able to speak to you. Um, can you speak to what happened to the Atlantans in Memorian after um, the disasters happened? Ah, yes. Well, I already spoke to that to some point. After the Atlantean concentric circle city was destroyed by the. Tsunami, tsunamis that were uh, created by the great eruption at uh, Santorini. The the tsunamis were so big they were they went inland more than half a mile. So that is that is huge. And when they go inland a half a mile, when they smash down, they go a lot farther and destroyed many, uh, they destroyed Atlantis almost completely. And there were people that survived that were outside the city at that time with the native people who they actually invited in at certain points. But um, the thing is about that, they, they started the Minoan Society. The Minoan Society was a very cultural, uh, artistic, knowledgeable society on the island of Crete but in some period they disappeared 
we think that perhaps the Yu Gi Oh came and got them. Okay, because some of the, the other thing we had heard was that uh, some of the uh, Atlanteans and Lemurian, when the disaster happened, they had left the planet and went somewhere else. Yes. Well, that's what we think happened with the Minoans. And uh, yes, I believe they, that could be correct. There is no documentation about that, but there is speculation about that. And no one knows what happened to the Minoan society. So that is the speculation there, that they were came and were removed from the planet. Um, in terms of what you learn spiritually, can you speak a little bit about that? Um, what would you like to know? There is spirituality is a wonderful thing. We learned that there was one God, one Creator, but that all things had um, a touch of the Creator in them because the Creator created everything. So a touch of creation was in everything, even the rocks and the trees and everything. Because we learned from the Yugil that crystals and rocks and different plants all had healing properties, helpful properties in some ways. So we learned that we were in harmony with the earth and that God had put that harmony there. Okay, now did you learn anything about the chakras or anything? Oh, like yes, a little bit. They did not go into great detail about the chakras, but they did tell us that we had energy centers in our body. And that made great sense to us because we could feel the energy centers at times. So <clears throat> they helped us with that, but our understanding of metaphysical things was not the highest at that time. Nicolette. Like, <clears throat> yes. May you um, tell us about the interactions you have with crystals? The crystals were the most fascinating of all the rocks or things that had power, but they had technology within them as well. We did not understand what that was, really, but we did understand that it was something that we didn't have, and it was something that was special because it, it did healing. They could hold crystals over you and be healed. They could hold uh, crystals over you and have your thought processes change. Like there were those that were uh, mentally disordered and they could change the order of their mentality and bring them into a phase where they could live in society and not be a burden. They also had things <clears throat> Uh, and their crystals were just amazing because they could do many things. I, I don't. I could go on and on about that. And but uh, they did heal. The most basic thing that I remember is they were healers with them. But they did also communicate with them, and they did also bring lightning from the sky to them. And actually, we believe that. I believe now that that was tele. And that was a, a teleportation sort of thing. Can you, can you teach us maybe how to use quartz? They didn't teach us how to use it. They just used it on us. Oh, okay. Uh, um, they taught us how to use stones without the technology to help heal our bodies and, and things of that nature. But they also added things to those. They added some energy to the stones to, to make them even more powerful. So... I believe that the, the stones that we had were of a greater power than ones that you just find laying around the ground these days. But um, they did help us, and I believe that's why our society was so calm, is because they energized us in a very positive way. So we were very, very much a community and very much happy with one another in many cases. Now there were a few, of course, in every culture, in every community, in every 
society, if you will. There are those that do not fit in, so it happens everywhere. So how is, how is light used with the crystals? We've had a previous channel come through Jim before, and he talks about the Atlanteans and how they use light with the crystals and how they yes. interact in the crystal grids. Yes, there was some, they had light at nighttime. When, there was, when the, the sun had gone away, there was light. And it was from the Yuyil's crystals. They had them placed in uh, certain places high above the ground where they would just shed light, and others could see them from other areas of the island. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I believe other people have questions. Yes. Um, what was the uh, your role in society? I was a, um, a potent, well, what are they called the, in here, this day and age? Um, I did, was a tradesman, really, but I had other things that I did well. I I made baskets. I made different things out of uh, wicker and things. I actually made um, some pottery and things of that nature. I was a, I was that kind of. I don't know what they're called. A craftsman, yeah. A craftsman, correct. Yes. Um, and then how long did did uh, Atlantis the last for how long? I I believe it lasted for a little over a thousand years. And the same will be true of Lemuria. Lemuria lasted much less, unfortunately. It only lasted three or four hundred years, maybe five. Okay. It was it was had a shorter existence. When when. Is that what you had heard? Um, no, I had understood that Lemuria was first. You know, they were the original society, ah, and no. then Atlanta came later. No, that is not so. Okay. And he was later. there. You talk about um, how they put technology in these crystals and yes. things like that. Were there maybe towards the end? Was there more? Or you said there was corruption. And you had also mentioned there's some interesting animals. Were there any kind of manipulation, experiments, mutations, anything like that going on? Crossing later, the animals perhaps? with people? Yes. Um, not crossing them with people, no, but crossing them with other animals to make them more useful. They did, they did cross animals, yes, but they did not cross them with human beings. Okay, so the corruption part was just... If they became greedy at the end, there was, much, there was much greed at the end. The power became greater with some of them, and with great power sometimes comes corruption, and that is what happened. They wanted more power, and they were human, of course, those that were causing the corruption, because the Yu-Gi-Oh had learned how to dissipate some of those corruptive feelings. However, they could not do it with humans, and some became very powerful and were actually hurting and killing off the Yu-Gi-Oh at the end. And so, yes, that's the Lemurians were, they called themselves Lemurians when they moved out. But uh, they were aware of these things. And they became a greater society. But short-lived, unfortunately, because of whatever it was that destroyed them. What was the lifespan? I lived to be 90. How tall were you? After that? Pardon me? Have you come back to Earth and reincarnated another lifetime? Yes, a couple times. But that was my most memorable life on Earth. And what did you say? How tall were you? The same as everyone else? I think I was about 5 foot 9. The mm. Yu-Yil were slightly shorter than us, just slightly, not a great deal. <laughs> Maybe yeah, a How many Yu-Yils were there in your society if they were living among you? Probably a hundred. Mm. Now, did they mate with the humans? 
I do not recall them mating with humans at that time. I think it was part of their spirituality at that time not to mate with the humans. But there was no hybridization going on at that time, no. Was there only one race? Only one race on that island. For the humans? Ah, I do not know. I only know what I know from my island, and I was that is where I, all I was. But I can look back and see that there was other countries and races and peoples on the planet from the Oversoul, but I was not much interested in them, in them at that time. So, but to learn everything I need to learn about the Earth, I need many lives. So, and I did leave, live some uh, 40 or 50 lives but on there, the Earth. It wasn't yes. a mix of races in Atlantis. And I do not know. It was just that is a good question. She's asked if there was a mix of races on Atlantis, and I do not know where the races came from that were on Atlantis. They seemed. It did not occur to me that there were other races at that time. So I was not looking for that. But to look back, I am sure that. Um, oh well, more for sure was not the same race. Moore was one of our founders, and for sure not the same color scheme right. as our race. But we did not really think of that as something different. We just thought it, it was um, just like there was many different kinds of plants and animals and trees. There's many different kinds of humans, but I did not see it as a different race. I just saw it as a different color. That's how equal they were. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yes. didn't, didn't some of the survivors go on to Egypt um, and start? There was much trade with Egypt, so there was there was Atlanteans in Egypt much of the time. So there were there could have been many uh, Atlanteans out doing trade and things when this happened, and uh, not been able to come back. Okay. So yes. So you and Egypt were about the same level of uh, advancement and technology. They were slightly below us in advancement, right. but they did have, but they actually became ahead of us after the, uh, of course, after Atlantis was destroyed, uh, Egypt became the great technological and great place that it was. But it and did have some technology even before Atlantis was destroyed because there was some uh, we do. I'm not sure what species that was, but there was a species there that looked that had that looked like you know what Anubis looked like. Of course, we they brought back yeah. pictures of some of the people from there, and they had sort of horsey looking faces. Were there you in Egypt? There was no you in Egypt that I know of. That I know of, but they have had. They were a species of horsey looking faces. Do you know anything about the pyramids? About how I, I do know happened? something about I knew there was crystals all around the pyramids and in the on the sphinxes and that they do have they did have uh, spaceships and that they did communicate with outer space and things of that they were <coughs> we were given that information when they came back from Egypt. And they said uh, they weren't frightened because they knew that there was also people, they knew about the Uyil, so they knew that other civilizations off the planet would exist, so they weren't really very frightened. But they were interested in their, it was different. Their technology was different, but they used a lot of crystals as well. So crystals are a very important thing. So. And you thought the purpose of the pyramids was what? Uh, to transport things from the outer space to Earth and Earth to outer space, and to communicate. <coughs> but they were not used there for healing. The crystals were not used for healing or for anything like that. It, it seemed like they were used for much more just technological reasons, where that's why I thought the Uyil were more advanced because they took that technology and brought it into a, a very spiritual use, a very 
a very human, they, they helped humans with it, so I thought that was an advance. Um, how many languages did you, did you have in Atlantis? I only had one, and the Yu Yu spoke it as well. But there were others that, when they did trade, had different languages, of course. But I only knew my own language. Okay, so, so Atlantis had only one language. Atlantis as a whole, yes. Okay, and then did the Lemurians have the same language, or was it different? They took the same language with them, yes. But when the Pleiadians came, there was some changes <laughs> made in the language. And the, the Pleiadians actually... Uh, taught their language to the Lemurians, and so it was interesting that their language did change. Are you able to speak some of your original language? That's where I'm going. Oh. Ah. How do you say, how do you say hello? How do you say goodbye? And how do you say thank you? <laughs> Fee, Sanu, and La. Fee? Fee? Fee is hello? Fee. And salu is goodbye. Salah. Salah. Yeah. Yes. And what is thank you again? La. La. And how do you La. say God? La. E. E was a very common sound, and so we thought it best to call God E because he was everywhere and most common thing in the universe. Uh, so, are there remains of your language left here on Earth? I'm sure if you if they find some of it, they will find it. Yes, they will find it. Okay. Um, who else has questions? Because I would like to ask for a blessing, but I first want to. Make sure. I would. I would like to ask a question. Yes. Uh, Miguelek, uh, will you tell us of your favorite memory of your life on Atlantis? Yes, my favorite memory was of my wife. Um, we got along so well. Her name was Sisa. Sisa. So, and Sisa and I were very close and very happy, and that is one of my greatest memories because we we were always together and always in one mind, and I think that is one of my greatest memories. Anybody else? I must go now. Yes, it is, okay. It is getting right. time for me to go. Okay. This, um, if, you could, if you could just do a, a blessing in Atlantean and then uh -huh. English, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I will try if I remember a good blessing. Ati e untata si pota laka tipupu en ho ho siti utiansa ia mia tukuroto muhi yakaka tuka. And it means we learn so much from the great sky that it brings the earth into a greater meaning. And the rocks and the trees and the flowers and water, the meaning of water has changed for us over the years. And many times it is like a cleansing of the spirit just to splash the face. And we give God the glory for all those things that we can experience. And we love him as he loves us. Beautiful. La. La. Thank you. La. La. Thank you. La. Thank you. Thank I am you so that. happy to have been here. I know some of the things that I've said do not agree with those things of others, but it is the way that I remember them and the way that I learned them. So 
I know that there are many different versions of Atlantis out there. There are many different versions of Lemuria out there. And what happened and who was there and all those things. But take my word for it. This is how I remember it. I do not have to be always correct. There may be things that I got wrong. Okay? But that is how I remember it. Thank you for your perspective. It's been an honor. Much come. love to you all. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for coming. La. Much love. Rulada. Thank you, Mikalek. Please come again. Thank you. Okie dokie, hi. Hi, Jim. Ooh. Hello. Hi. Water for Jim, water for Jim. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, please. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty. All right, that was good. That was really good. Uh, I think good. he covered a lot. He did? He liked to talk. Yep. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> That's beautiful, actually, because you cover most of the questions without having to ask each one of them. So, oh. <laughs> well, wasn't that good? <laughs> Very good. Um, he was great, Jim. Huh? May I give you ripping? Sure. Will's working on Oh, good. Yes, I feel terrific. I always feel terrific. What was his name? Mikalek. Yes. Mikalek. Yes. yes. Mikalek. And you, one of you knew who he was. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, Kim knew who he was. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, nobody knows who he is. <laughs> so, oh, and how did you know him? As soon as you said the name, I got a visual. So I'm straight oh, okay. away. Yeah, and then I got a whole little five-minute memory come. So it was wonderful. Thank you, dear. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, because I never heard of him before. Do you think you knew him in a past life? <laughs> do you, uh, do you, did you know him or did you talk to him? Yes. In oh, no, you knew uh, him. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, very oh, well. Very good. Excellent. Can you just wow. say the name? I got a piece of I'm oh. sure I Yeah, and then I got a whole. Oh, we're on a delay now. Oh, we're on delay now. That's okay. So uh, Mikalek here was feeding back. It's okay. I'm muted. Um, okay. It's okay now. So one more, more than one person knew who Mikalek was. Yes. Oh wow. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> I've never heard of him before, so that's very cool that some people do know him. That's cool. So excellent. Alrighty then. Anybody else have any questions or anything? Um, hi Jim. Hi everybody. Oh hi, how are you? Hey, Sabrina. Good. I just made it. Somebody, somebody just dropped off, so I got in. I, uh, I didn't hear. Was the question about the Lemurians living under Mount Shasta asked? Well, yes, it was. It was asked. Okay. Thank you. I guess I'll have to ask for uh, uh, apologize. The question and answer um, oh, was playing up a little bit. So when I tried to ask the question, I couldn't get the full information. So I apologize for that. Oh, no problem. You're OK, Rowie. <laughs> well, that's, that's fine. I just, so what was, does anybody remember the answer if you're living there or not? Um, he, uh, from what they just said, he said he didn't know for sure. He wasn't familiar with Mount He wasn't familiar with Mount Shasta. Oh, okay, thank you. He what he knew that there was a civilization living there, but he wasn't sure where their origins were from. Oh, that's thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. <sighs>
Cool. So, Jim, do you mostly remember now, or where um, where exactly are you whenever you're channeling? Uh, bits and pieces. I hear a lot of it, but I don't remember a lot of it. But if you bring something up, I'll start to remember it. So that's cool. It's like semi-conscious. And you feel good when you're through? I feel great. You feel exhausted? Yeah. I feel great. I never, ever after, after channeling feel bad. I always feel really, really good. So that's a good thing. So if Jim, I felt, can I ask you? Sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I oh, mean, okay. I have a pretty clear memory of the appearance of the Lemurians, and um, um, it, it's that they all look relatively similar. They have violet eyes, tallish in height, what we would call attractive, uh, yes. fair. Um, probably not much distinction between them. Um, right. I mean, yes, definitely male and female, but could could almost appear all related. Um, okay. Is that a memory you have too, or that's part of the Pleiadian part? Yeah, the Pleiadians mm -hmm. are like that. Yeah. but the the original Lemurians that got there first were more human looking, but the uh, Pleiadians really affected them because, well, they had a very spiritual culture. And the Pleiadians were very attracted to it, and so they came very mm. close to when they first got there. I'm sure. I'm not sure. But I'm not sure. Mm. Says that he, um, the Pleiadians came and seeded, you know, the the Marians. Oh, Actually really? Put the DNA into them. Oh. Could it be that they were there and he, they seeded them there? That's. But I understand. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the Lemurians came and they seeded them. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that that's a possibility. It's possible. But I know that they were human first, mm. and then they okay. they could have been okay. seeded. Okay. Yeah. An enhancement. An enhancement. Mm -hmm. Much like we say, increase yes. our DNA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then somebody might have wiped them out because they thought it was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they said about how they were wiped out. But anyway, very good. Thank you. Natural disaster. Oh, okay. Well, I've heard that it was uh, spurred by because they were doing some really bad, corrupt things. That like maybe the heavens came down and oh. said, okay, this is enough. You know, that's oh, okay. that's the impression that I got why they were okay. destroyed. Okay. Yeah, it was a, a definitely an event. <clears throat> some sort. It was. It happened. In, all mm. one, all one. And the reason why. Like it was yeah. divinely uh, divinely program. inspired. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. That oh, well, we have to ask somebody higher up. Did you want to close with a blessing? Okay. Let's do that. All right. Go ahead. Whoever wants to speak can speak. Katana na kutu, sia katana na na kutu, sia katio. Oria katana na kutu, sia tio. Oria sanu atiki. Kyoto na nos kutu, ala kia kotuku. Kutia kia katana na kutu. Kukia tatana na kutu, sia ki. Kyoto na 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 kutu, sanu. Akato sana na ku. Kia kanana na kutuku. Anu atuku. Kiatanana, kyo sa kyoto no no, totsoku to no no kutu asiki, kiana sakatu, osoto no no, tiana na kuataki, anana kutu kusuku, akani o kutu alata kyo kutu, kua na kato kata, kyo sono a tuataki, kyo no no, kua takano no kuskutu, kiana kata. Katuakate kyo kutu kuru akati kyo sunona kya sana kwa kwa na kyo ku kwa sakatana kya sana nakata a kyo suati yo suno ku a kyo suno kwa saki kyo no sukuata a kya satona kuku sana kuata kya ka kyo kuku o sana katu osuku kwa sana Kia no sotoko, osioko takiota, kia saka, totsunoko, 
still autumn. I can't talk to you. Greetings. Do not be too concerned about those cultures in the past. Although they had much light and spirit, and they did fall away, your society will have a greater light, a greater understanding of spirit, and a greater love. One day you will be like gods, but you will know that there is a god that is still greater. You will understand that the community that you are building is for all, and not just for one small planet. You are building a community for interaction in the galaxy and interaction in the universes. Please do not take too much at heart what has happened in the past, for you cannot ever go back there and live it. You can understand it and know that it existed and believe that it was a great thing, but what you are about to experience in your future is much greater. Hold on to those hopes and positivities that bring you closer to a light that is so full that it will blind you to look at it fully. But right now, you are moving closer to each other and building a flame that will be seen in the galaxy. Namaste. Thank you. That was perfect. That was very beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Sabrina and Jim. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well, I love you all. I'm going to uh, <laughs> say there goodbye you know. for now and uh, have some lunch and something to eat and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, one thing I will say, I, after I talk to the aliens, I'm thirsty and I'm hungry. <laughs> but um, I'm not tired. <laughs> um, but I, you, I'm really tired. Before you go, Jim, I just want to I just want to let everybody know uh, that's with you that there is the uh, the channeling workshop. If anybody would like to join, we have a date. Uh, January 31st at 3 p.m. Okay. Is it going to be here or on, just online? It'll be here and online. Okay. Uh -huh. I think you're coming. Yes, I am. Francine's coming okay. uh, to the workshop. Yeah, it was just fun. announced, what, yesterday or the day before. Mm. So uh, we'll have a, a channeling workshop on that day. And whoever wants to come, so that's great. You can come online. You can come to my house. You want to travel here from Spain? I don't care. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably easier to do it online. <laughs> and Sabrina, do you pay through PayPal? Um, yes, you pay. You send it to Jim. Yeah. And just make sure you write uh, for meditation uh, right. workshop. That's also <laughs> that he knows. Uh, yeah, okay. just on here or online or whatever. Okay. It's okay is there any more announcements? <laughs> Any no, more announcements? No, I think that I think that that was oh, and the for the other one that we're supposed to do for the people that had donated towards the computer, yes, I haven't when, heard from anybody. Um, oh. I haven't heard from from most people. Um, oh, so, I might well, just pick a date. All right. And let's and then you see because pick a date together and see if they can do it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we'll That's do good. that. All right. Okay, though. Um, yes, very good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Much love. Yeah, much love. Bye, Jim. Bye. Bye, everybody over there. See you soon. Bye. Bye yes. Love you all. Bye, bye. Love you. So thank you very much. We've been Human Colony. You can find us on www.humancolony.org. If you would like to make a donation, if you find this information helpful or just be nice, etc., you can find the donation page on our website, and you can help us stay online for the near the future. So have a beautiful weekend, guys, and much love to you all, and we'll see you soon next week. Thank you. Thank much you. love. Thank you. Thank you, Rowie. Thank yes. you, Rowie. Really <laughs> <laughs>